Hi everybody and welcome back to the Reaper 101 course. I'm Adam Steele and this episode is about routing. It's not the most glamorous part of Reaper, but it's something that is really important to really get the most out of what Reaper can do besides just play some sounds. It can really transform your work and your mixes from something that's kind of difficult to something that's kind of easy and can really be bent to your will. Before we do, I'm quickly going to mention again the ultimate Reaper guide on Promix Academy, which is where we go into incredible detail about all of this kind of stuff right from the very beginning, right to the very end, including a lot of advanced stuff and recording and mixing an entire track entirely in Reaper and showing you how I do all the little cool little things that I do that make it work for me. So check that in the link in the description below. So put simply, routing is the kind of idea of sending sound or MIDI from one place to another. It's pretty simple, but it can be used in a lot of slightly complicated ways to do things however you see fit. So the way that things work by default in Reaper with routing is that every track is a stereo track, or at least a, what, what you might think of as a two channel track, which we usually think of as left and right. And if you just leave that by default, any sound that plays through there will go to the master output. The master output is what we tend to hear through monitor speakers or headphones. And so that's relatively simple. If I hit play on this, this is a third take that goes up. You can see the levels going on this channel called mic, and then you can also see the master on the left moving, and that's what we're hearing. This is a third take that goes up. And so if you're running a really simple system where you're running just two outputs, maybe two inputs for microphones, that's kind of it. But what if we don't want things to go out of our master output? There are so many reasons for that. Maybe we want to reamp a guitar, so we want to send its signal out somewhere else. Here's a nice reamp box from Palmer that I would plug into my interface to make that happen. That, that's a thing for another day, but that's just kind of thinking about a channel going somewhere else. If we think about sends, like we were talking about effect sends in a previous video, that's routing as well because that's sending a sound somewhere else, but that's sending it inside of Reaper. I could maybe have a separate headphone mix done inside Reaper that is sending out of, I don't know, outputs five and six on an interface with lots of different headphones. Whatever the interface's output numbers are, I get to choose, I get to define that, I can just tell Reaper this is what we're doing. You'll often hear about side chains. That's where a compressor has a completely separate way of listening for how to kind of affect its amount of volume. That's routing. And we've got folders as well, which can keep things nice and neat and tidy, but passes audio around in a way that is routing. A lot of this can be seen on the screen if we look at this little button here. This is the kind of routing button and you'll see there's a copy of this on the edit window at the top where it actually says route and there's a copy on the mixer which is a little bit less obvious. But it has three stripes on here and the first one is a green stripe. If you see a green stripe on that on a channel that means that that is going to go out of its parent send. When we when we get to folders, I'll talk about parents again, but for the moment, think about that as the master send. This sound is currently, this is a third take coming out of, if we, if we click on that button, we open our routing window and we can see that there is a tick box at the top here that says master send channels. And it says from and to. Right now, this is a two channel track. So we're sending all of our channels out of one and two. If I untick this box, suddenly if I hit play, we can see the meters moving on the track, but we can't hear anything. And that's because now it's not being sent out of anywhere. Let's turn master back on. Under routing, we can see the usual volume and pan sliders. And there's also a cool little stereo width slider in here. So if you've got a stereo track like overheads, you can bring them in a little bit just with this slider with no plugin. Cool little extra thing there. But then below that is where it gets really interesting because we've got sends 
So like we were talking in the effects about inserts and sends, if I want to send this track mic to let's say channel 10, let's call that reverb. So now if I hit play on my audio, you should see two meters move. This is a third take that goes up. And so we saw that move on the original mic channel and on this reverb channel because it's being sent at full volume. So if I look at my routing window again, you can see a send turned up and the send has its own set of controls. It has its own volume, its own pan. You can decide whether it goes out pre or post fader. So the fader that's on that channel, so the volume slider, does that affect how much is being sent to this other send? If it was something like a reverb, I would usually have that as post fader. So if I turn down my original track, I get the same amount of, of reverb kind of going up and down together in, in concert. If it was pre fader, I might use that for something like a headphone mix. So I would use pre fader, but post effects, because that way, if that's being sent to a headphone mix, if I then turn the volume up and down on the original while I'm listening in the studio in the control room, that doesn't affect the volume of that source on the headphone mix. However, the slider here that you'll see at the bottom where it says reverb, that's got a tiny little knob on it. That's a volume knob and that changes how much is going over to the other track. So let's just say for a second that I actually put a reverb on just to do a demonstration. I'm going to use the Archuria reverb plate. I'm not going to change any of the settings apart from where it says dry wet. I'm going to make sure that is all the way wet because I don't want, in this case, the original sound coming through this new track called Reverb. So that's just the pretty interface. I'm going to leave that at default. If I hit play, this should sound quite reverby. This is a third take that goes on. Now, if I open the routing window on mic again, I'll change that back to post fader. And you'll see as I change the volume on mic. This is a third take that goes on. And this is appearing my original. So as I'm affecting the volume there, the amount of reverb is going up and down with it. If I change that to pre effects. Oh, another little nice shortcut here is you'll see there's the insert effects, then the sends. If I click on that send, that brings up its own tiny little part of the routing window. And so I could change that to pre fader. I could even have it pre effects. So any effects that are on that track, like a virtual amp or a compressor or whatever, if I want to send the original sound out to a different track, I can do that by being pre fader pre effects. This is a third take that goes on. So. So now I've got the fader entirely down on my original. And so all I'm hearing is that reverb. And so by doing pre-fader, you can do some cool kind of, you know, film sound stuff where I have kind of footsteps, for example, that would come in and out. Uh, but the reverb of the room doesn't change because the room itself wouldn't actually change. You can do anything like that as you wish. Let's open this routing window again and you'll see that underneath the sends, that send appeared. And then under that is audio hardware output. So depending on how many outputs your interface that you have has, in my case, I have an audience ID 24, I can send any sounds out of any outputs. So in this case, let's say I wanted to send the sound out of analog three, which is where I might send a, a raw guitar DI out to a guitar amp using something like a reamp box in between to make that a proper guitar signal. Then I'll click analog three and that would give me a new send. So you can see here it says analog three underneath and then I can change the amount of volume. In that case, if I was sending out a dry guitar DI, I do this a lot with reamping, then I would definitely turn off the master send. So I would go to routing and untick master send. And now you can see the green stripe has gone but a yellow stripe has appeared and that is because there is a send going on. Also, all the way over on the reverb channel that we, we made, that has a blue stripe and the blue stripe is what we call a receive. The way that sends work internally in Reaper is they have a send and a receive. So it's kind of just like a cable connection. It's going from one place to another place. 
And it's nice in Reaper that we can see, if I open this on the Reverb channel, the receive is on the right. So we can only have one of these windows open and we can see it from either side. So this, where it says mic with the volume, the pre the post fader, is exactly the same as if I was to open the routing on the mic and that appears under send. So if it's exactly the same faders, exactly the same controls, but if we've got a big complicated project, I could open, for example, a, a reverb and look at the receives. So rather than going through every channel individually to try and find out, well, which tracks did I send to this reverb? I can just open the reverb's routing and see all the receives and see this is taking sound from, say, kick drum, snare drum, toms, whatever, I can see that and I can do them all in one quick window. There's also MIDI hardware output here. So if you've got any MIDI synthesizers or any anything that you want to switch banks or channels or anything like that, then underneath MIDI hardware output, you would drop that down. Mine currently says no output, but if you had a MIDI device connected, you would select that there. And that would then send the MIDI data notes out to that synth or whatever it is that you have plugged in. Now let's talk about track channels for a minute because we're starting to get into the worlds of not only sidechain, which I'll come to, but things like immersive audio, surround sound, all that kind of stuff. So if I open a routing page on one of these, let's say music one, we can see underneath the master send, it says track channels two and Reaper works in pairs. So you'll have two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and so on. With the latest version of Reaper, it goes all the way up to 128 channels per track, which is amazing. Probably not going to use that at any point, but it's there. And so if you need it, you can absolutely do that. But what I could do is change this from two tracks to four tracks. And suddenly it will have four independent channels of audio going on on the meters. And if I change that all the way up, let's say 64, you'll see this channel here became a lot thicker and fatter because there are now 64 audio meters on that track. And that is a huge amount. Having said that, even if this had 64 channels of audio, our master output is currently only set to two channels. So we would only hear channels one and two because all 64 of the channels would be sent to the master output the master output says, well, I only have two channels. And so it would just discard the other 62. This happens a lot in surround sound setups when people are getting started with Reaper. Let's just keep this a bit simpler and say this is six tracks. And going to the master output. The master output, let's say we're doing 5.1. So from here, I would open the routing on the master output and change the track channels to six outputs for 5.1. And then the hardware outputs here is still only stereo. So I would change that to be a multi-channel source, six channels. And then in my case, I'd choose one to six as the outputs, but that's now sending all six outputs to their relative channel. So if you've got a 5.1 system and you're mixing 5.1 with something like the resurround pan plugin, which we'll be looking at more in the ultimate Reaper guide, Let's see, input channels was six and it's 5.1. Now I can pan all of those on my tracks in a kind of 3D space and be really kind of clever about it. And that will come out of the master output out of a 5.1, which we could then export as a 5.1 file to whoever needs it. You can do that. I'm saying 5.1, you could do 7.1, you could do 7.1.4, the kind of Dolby Atmos compatible beds. 7.1.2, which I know works. And there's all sorts of stuff you can do. You can have as many channels as you need for your specific project. I have seen people with kind of uh, 3D setups that go absolutely crazy with channel numbers. That's not really my kind of field when we're talking like 60 channels plus just for tracks, but it's doable and it's there. Okay, I've reset everything back to something kind of approaching normality now. And we're going to talk about side chains for a second because side chains use that track channel idea to get their audio moved to where it needs to be. So side chaining quickly is, let's say you've got a compressor, you give it some volume and when it's too loud, it starts to pull down. 
what you can do is you can go, hey, actually, I don't want the volume of this thing to be what triggers the volume change. I want the volume of something else to be what triggers the volume change. You see this a lot in electronic music with things like kick drums being sent to something like the bass. So when the kick hits, the bass ducks down. That's side chaining. So how we would do this with any plugin that supports side chaining, and a lot do, but you'll have to check with your third party manufacturer, is let's say this synthesizer and this vocal that are going on at the same time, let's reset everything back to normal. So that's kind of how things were before. Let's say we want that synth to duck down whenever the, whenever the voiceover happens. So the first thing I would do is have a compressor on my synth. So let's use the Reaper one and bring the threshold down, bring the ratio up, all that kind of stuff. Currently that's set to be triggered by itself. So if it gets loud, it will duck. And that's the detector input, which is currently set to main inputs. If we switch this to the auxiliary inputs, that's now technically going to side chain, but nothing's going to happen because we've not sent the vocal into it yet. So where it says at the very top right of this plugin here, two slash four in, two out. What that means is this plugin can take four inputs, but currently it only has two assigned. The four inputs are left and right for the audio, and the side chain is on three and four. That's how this plugin is set up. It can be different depending on your plugin. That's generally the accepted standard. But if you're working with multi-channel audio, you might have a 5.1 compressor with a side chain. So that might be six channels of audio. And then the next two channels are for the side chain, which is seven, eight. Now I've changed this to auxiliary inputs. Nothing's going to happen. The quick brown fox jump. So the first thing I'll want to do is open up the routing for this channel and change it from track channels two to track channels four. That's now changed so that there are two channels that we're not going to hear because they're not going to the master output. Like I said, anything that is above the number of tracks that the master output has will be discarded. The quick brown and you can see how the plugin for the compressor changed to be four in, two out, no longer two slash four. We still aren't done because we now have to send our microphone out to the synth. So we'll open the routing on the microphone and we're going to add a new send to, we called it Dave for the synth just to be silly. But that it says now sends to Dave brackets four channels. And at the bottom of this section here, it says audio one and two, which is our audio that we're hearing. And then arrow going to the channels on the new track. And we don't want that going to one and two. We want to drop this down and change this to three and four. A nice little shortcut here. If we hadn't changed our other track to have the extra channels yet, there is a thing here for new channels on receiving track. And so I could add another one or two channels that would automatically turn our synth into a four channel track and do all that in the background as a nice quick shortcut. So we're going to change this to three and four. So our audio from the microphone one and two is going to the synth on three and four. Now, if I hit play, the quick brown fox jumped over the laser lock. it's not quite compressing because it's not loud enough. But if I bring the threshold down, because we could see the audio here, the quick brown fox jumped there we go. So can you hear the synth then went wah, wah, wah every time the vocal happened? The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That is exactly expected behavior and that's how we want side chains to work. I would then mess around with the controls on the compressor to get them to play together nicely as, as is appropriate for my song and my mix. But in this case, that's, that's all I need was getting the audio to the right place. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is folders. I love folders in Reaper. They make my life so much easier. I'm just going to make a new track. I'm going to use the shortcut Apple and T, although you can right click with new track. So you can go to track, insert new track. There are so many ways to make a new track. And I'm going to call it folder. You don't have to, you can call it anything. You can call it anything you like. 
And then what I'm going to do is, oh, I'm going to hide the mixer for a second so I can see what I'm doing. And let's say I wanted music one, Mike and Dave, which I'm shift clicking, all to be inside this folder. So there's a couple of ways to do this. One thing I could do is select them all so they're highlighted and then drag them upwards on top of the one that's called folder. And if I let go, this has changed slightly in Reaper 7. If I drag these three up and go to the left a little bit, we'll see the mouse changes to a little folder plus icon. If I let go, now you'll see that these tracks are indented a little bit on the left. So now you can see that these three tracks are inside this folder. If I bring up the mixer again, you'll now see as well quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All of the sound that was happening here is now coming out of the folder because the folder is considered to be the parent track of all of these tracks that have now been put up into it, into the folder. If I click the little down arrow here, I can make the track smaller and even smaller and then pop them back out. On the mixer, something I like to do as well is right click on the master and change the little tick box here clickable icon for folder tracks to show and hide children. I like to have that on because now on my mixer, I can show and hide everything that's inside that folder, which is also indented on the mixer. That way I can have a really complex project going and I might have something like a drum group, a bass group, a guitar group, a lead guitar group, and I can just collapse them all down and just see those as kind of groups or buses without having to do any more complex routing. And any effects that I apply to that folder will then apply to all the sound that is fed through them. Meaning that this acts very much like a group or a bus on an analog mixing desk, except with a little bit more kind of organization. You can also have folders within folders. I do this all the time. If I was to make a quick setup, I'll just delete these empty tracks. Let's say I was recording a guitar, a rhythm guitar, two tracks left and right with two microphones each. Here's how I would do it. I would make a new track, call it guitar group. Uh, I would make another new track and call it, let's say call it left. I'll make two more tracks and call them the microphone names, say SM57 and 421. And I would drag these two tracks for the microphones into the left folder. I could then right click that and duplicate it. Rename that one right. So I've now got the same for the left and the right guitars. And then I can move all of those into a guitar group. And that's now three folders deep. But when I get to my mixer, you can see how it's nice and kind of organized. So I've got the left guitar, which I can pan to the left the right guitar that I can pan to the right, the microphones are tucked inside, so if I don't want to see them once recording is done, I can then hide them. But later in the mix, if I decide the balance of the microphones was wrong, I can go back to them, open up the folder, change those balances, close them down again, and it's nice and neat. And if I don't need to see the left and right guitars, I can then collapse that inside that guitar group. And that looks like one stereo track with everything going on behind the scenes. So when I don't need to see what's going on, so say in the mix stage, I don't have to see it, but my options are all there without having to do any renders or freezes or any of that kind of stuff. So there you go, routing is powerful in Reaper. And in the Ultimate Reaper Guide, we go even further and talk about everything like automatic headphone cue buses and all sorts of cool stuff that you can do. For now, that's where I'm going to leave it with routing. Thanks everybody for watching. In the next video, we're going to talk about exporting your work, which isn't just getting a WAV file to a client. We're going to talk about uh, stems, uh, master mixes, regions, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be really powerful. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.